What's up, guys? Welcome to the sesh. Rob, we're back. We're back, and we got a special guest, Rachel, in the house. Hey, Rachel. Hi. Ra Rachel, kind of talk about our background together, like how I met you and, and what you were doing and what were you up to. Um, so I met Josh at the Children's Advocacy Center um, of Hidalgo County. I was a family advocate there, and Josh um, started doing, I guess, like our social media pages, kind of like our IT, not IT, but the running of the social media sure, pages. Yeah, the and advertisement going and, and the recording social media stuff. presence. He was always picking me out to do <laughs> interviews and I would be like, Ugh. Anyone that would look at me, I was like, all right, you're up. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, hide, yes. I would always hide. If I knew Josh was in the building, I'd run because I knew he was gonna pick me. Well, it still happens with every single client that has. Mm. So. <laughs> yeah, and I'd be like, changed. no, I, I just can't, I get real nervous, you know, I'd like, Sweaty pits, everything. everything like it's the queen of ums, like I said earlier. I just, it, it, yeah, but that's how I met Josh. And we've just kind of kept in contact because of the center. He nice. was always really involved. Um, and I know we've tried to talk before, but it was just crazy, you know, Under schedules. Under different circumstances, yeah. yeah. I think the schedules and everything. The interesting thing, why, what had piqued my interest to get you on was I had read something horrific about something. And I was like, well, you're a perfect person to talk to about that, but your hands are tight because you can talk at the time. But then you also started blowing up on TikTok and selling all these things, that, which is not more interesting, but interesting for what I do for a living, if that makes sense. Because like, my goal is to make as much money from the internet as possible. Mm -hmm. So that's always been my goal. And I wanted to you know, get insight from you on how you did it, what you did, how, how it was even possible. I mean, somebody from the Valley doing that stuff, I think is pretty admirable. And you don't get to hear about these stories very often. So kind of just jump into it, the whole Johnny Depp and Amber Heard thing. So I think like everybody else, you know, I was really invested in the trial and everything that was going on. Just, just the simple fact that he was able to get a jury trial for defamation that in itself that's a big thing yeah. yeah that's a big that's a big thing aside from their you know notoriety movies, yeah their fame yeah their fame with the level that they're at um so of course i was invested in it honestly it happened by accident so if you're asking me how i did it i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> i have no idea it, I, it wouldn't have happened it would it would not have been possible without my son that I can tell you right now. My son started his own brand. He just researched. He's self-taught. Everything he knows, he is self-taught. Um, he's had people that he has reached out to and they mentor him and they kind of helped him in the beginning. But honestly, he's learned everything on his own. He's you know started doing this at the age of 19. Give a shout out to him because we were talking about him earlier and I was yeah. like, we've heard of him before. My we've team. had full-blown discussions about your son and how he has progressed in his industry and it's funny because it seems like you yourself rachel and your son have been in my life for the last week almost because my wife longer, yeah. went to go do her nails at a nail salon in westlico with a young lady by the name of erica and she was wearing one of your shirts and, oh, wow. and she said i bought this shirt and, and my wife, Judy, was like, oh, my God, where'd you get it? She's like, from a local lady here who's selling them now. And it was it was an Amber Heard, <laughs> Johnny Depp shirt. So that's how you have manifested into my life prior to today that we meet for the first time. But another associate of ours, Carlos, has this backpack. And he was has this really elaborate story about this individual who started his own brand of clothing. Very called, niche. Very market. niche called Psych Ward. Mm -hmm. And he was educating us about him and how he, you know, does things. And then you walk in the day and it happens to be your son. Yep. <laughs> so you've been in our conversations indirectly um, and your son as well for the last whole week. And then I'm kind of putting all the <laughs> dots together and now I'm tripping out. Like, That's so wow, crazy. It is. It's What's your son's name? His name's Mikey. Mikey. Okay. Mike. Mikey, I still is... call him Mikey. I tell him, I don't care if you're 50. I'm going to call you Mikey forever. <laughs> He's my Mikey. So, um, but like to the... Like his followers, they all know him as Mike Molly. He never wanted to use his real name. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to come into play in a little bit whenever I start talking about what happened with me. Sure. So he's, he's always gone by Mike Molly to his followers. So he's the one who kind of kicked you off on this or pointed you in the direction? So what happened was um, I had taken a leave from work. Um, you know, I just had to, I went back to school. Um, it was getting really busy at work. And it's just, I needed to kind of just 
recharge. You know, and initially that's what I thought I was mm -hmm. going to do. It was just a break. Um, I was suffering from burnout, you know, yeah. having to work with listen and listening to trauma every single day. And I think it, it started affecting me a little bit more when I started working side by side with the nurse, because with the nurse, I was actually in the room when she was conducting the exams. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I did, I've done that for the past few years. It wasn't just a family advocate. I was now a medical advocate. Um, but hearing it firsthand from the children themselves, um, I think kind of maybe started taking a toll on me a little bit. Um, so I just needed a, a little break. Um, and in this break, I've always had this thing for like crafting and, you know, doing little projects, DIY stuff. Um, I had the stuff to make t-shirts. Um, and I honestly went and I made a t-shirt for me. <laughs> That's how it started. Wow. I, what, what is the saying? If you won't wear it, nobody else will? Nobody. If you're not making it for yourself, yeah, nobody else will. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, I said, I'm going to make a Johnny Depp t-shirt because... Well, that's what was going on, you know, the trial and Depp. everything. Mm -hmm. And it was probably maybe a week <clears throat> after he had made the whole, um, the comment where he said, it isn't happy hour anytime. Anytime, yeah. So I said, you know what? I had found this picture um, on the internet and I added the text, which was for me, my personal use. So copyright people, like, don't come at me. <laughs> yeah, this, sure. I was not selling it. It was mm -hmm. from, it was my t-shirt. Um, and I, I designed it and I made it. And I kind of just posted on TikTok and on Facebook, like, look what I'm kind of like making. Nowhere on there did it say for sale, mm -hmm. nothing like that. Um, it happened to be the Friday that I picked up my last check. I had already like oh, finished wow. all my um, vacation time and my sick time. That was the last, that was that Friday. Um, the Thursday prior to, well, it was after midnight. I had posted it on TikTok, fell asleep, woke up in the morning. My son had, my 12 year old had an appointment. Um, so I'm taking him to the doctor and he tells me, mom, you have like a hundred comments on your TikTok. <laughs> Mind you, I had like a hundred followers and they were all people I knew, mm -hmm. you know, I would only follow people or that like, we would follow each other, but it was just people that I knew. I wouldn't go adding like random folks on there. And I start looking and I'm just like, they're, everybody's asking me, where can I get it? Where can wow. I buy it? Where's the link? I can't believe you posted without a link. Yada, yada, yada. Well, I'm just like, you know, I tell my husband, I said, Hey, um, people are asking me to buy the shirt. What do I do? And he says, where? I said, on TikTok. He's like, like your friends? And I said, no, like they're people I don't know. He's like, everybody. Like, like for the world? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I don't know where they're from. He's like, why would you do that? Like, why would you post it for everybody if you're not going to sell? Like, you, you don't have the stuff to make it at that quantity, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, what? So he, I'm, I'm, call, I'm calling my son, Mikey, who is the night owl. Okay, mind you, this is eight in the morning. Yeah, there's no way. That he's one, answering. he goes to sleep at six in the morning, sleeps all day, and he works at night because all he does is everything's computer, mm -hmm. like designing, designing, designing. So he, that's just his schedule. It's always been like that. So I'm just like, Mikey, um, this is kind of an emergency, mijito. Can you call me, please? Nothing. <laughs> I let a few hours go by. My 12 year old looks again. He's like, Mom, you're like up to like a thousand comments. I said, wow. I start shaking, and I'm like, What do I do? Like. I'm calling my son again, Mikey, they're asking me for a link. Do I send them like my cash app thing and email or please get back to me? Nothing, still nothing. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to call his roommate. And I call his roommate and I said, uh, Jason, if, if you're there at the apartment, please wake Mikey up. It's an emergency. Tell him to get back to me. Um, by that time, my son read the messages. He still hadn't called me. All he said, I'm creating your website right now. That's all he replied to me. <laughs> Boom in business so he says he then calls me he says where are you at i said i'm running errands you know he's like you need to come home right now because i need you here i need you we need to come up with like your brand name we need to come up i said just do whatever like people are asking me for a link mike it's like at three thousand comments already like within a span wow. of hours Sheesh. so it went from like a hundred to like a thousand to like three thousand and i'm like I, I, do i reply like he's like start replying to people that the link is going up later start I was replying so much that TikTok banned <laughs> my comments. I couldn't comment anymore. It told me that I was com replying to too many people at the same time. So I think they thought maybe I was like a spammer or a computer mm -hmm. or something. I couldn't comment anymore. Wow. I get home in a span of like maybe an hour and a half, an hour and a half tops. He bought domain. He set up so I could accept Stripe payment, PayPal payments. Up and running. Um, everything. And he's like, okay. Link is up, start, make another post, put him, put on there, your link is up. And he 
opened up like the Google Analytics, which is it tells you like how many people are on your page and things like that. Within, like he's like, look, okay, this is how you're gonna tell how many people are on your site. Look, you have two people, 15 people, 30 people, mom, oh my God. And then you just start hearing ching, <laughs> ching, 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 ching. Uh, like, where is money? <laughs> Ten thousand dollars the first night. <laughs> You're kidding me. The website was up and running by six, six p.m. Friday. By midnight, at midnight, I hit ten thousand dollars in sales of t-shirts. Then I started thinking, how am I gonna do this? Nobody here locally. This is, mind you, there's still shortages of things Every, coming everything. in. Yeah. I'm reaching out to all the local t-shirt businesses. Like, I need, I need like a thousand shirts, right? At this point, I'm just like, at first I was like, okay, I need 500 mm -hmm. just to have extra. And then by the next day, Saturday, Saturday, I had another 17,000 just on Saturday. You are stories that we hear about that are, are little unicorns. 17,000. <laughs> Aside from the 10,000. In sales? In sales. So in two days, you're already hitting $30,000. Yes. Wow. That's amazing. Congratulations. Wow. Thank yes. you. <laughs> that is awesome. I Thank love you. to hear these stories. And so is it a specific, it's just one design? I made, my son tells me, you know, it's so crazy because I've had my brand for so many years already and you surpassed my, I, I had 10 items on my website because he'll, he'll do drops. He'll do mm -hmm. a monthly drop, mm -hmm. right? And he'll have like 10 different items and it can have from apparel to clothing to Accessories, blankets, anything, yeah. you know, whatever. He says, you made more in sales on one shirt than I did having 10 items. Wow. <laughs> on a monthly, yeah. That's and that, that was just opening weekend. I So then I, I shut down the website because I'm just like, okay. I can't I, take any more orders. I can't, right? But people were messaging me. Wow. Uh, I don't care how long I have to wait. I don't care. I Honestly, this past, today, I'm working on my last 38 orders. Wow. I sold six, over a little bit over 1,600 order t-shirts. Well, 1,600 orders, so it's more t-shirts, because some people would order four, yeah. three, six. I had some people order up to six shirts. And these were going all around the United States? All around the United States. I did ship one to Australia, because <sighs> this lady messaged me personally and said, I will pay whatever. Mm. I didn't want to do international, because I, I felt like the shipping is outrageous. Mm -hmm. She was like, I will pay whatever it takes. She paid $50 shipping wow, to get it within wow, a week. To get a t-shirt. She wanted it within the week. So it's insane. Crazy. <laughs> I'm just so like admirable, man. Like I'm so overwhelmed with joy because these are success stories that you hear about. That you never get to meet the you person. You never get to meet the people. You know, you never <laughs> get to hear how it happened or how it materialized. And I always get those uh, YouTube ads like, you want to sell all this stuff in 30 days? Come and, and take was, my course. Yeah, and this was with no ads. Yeah, you know, my son awesome. buys organically, ads. organically, yeah. So my son buys ads, and whenever he has his stuff going, and he'll promote it, right? And this I, was exclusively through TikTok. This was exclusively through TikTok because I had I had posted it on Facebook, you know. And the whole thing with that Friday being my last check, I told my husband, you know, if I sell 10, 10 shirts a week at twenty bucks, yeah, I can help with groceries at least. You mm. know, my husband's like, don't worry about it. Focus on school. Take a break. I don't know what I would do without my husband being like as supportive as he is. Mm -hmm. He's amazing, you know, and he had been telling me for such a long time, just you need to take a break. You know, I had a little health scare a few years back and he's just like, take it easy, go back to school, you know. Focus on yourself. But yes. And with this happening, he's like, you always said that you were waiting for the sign. No. That's yeah. sign. Who knew Johnny Depp was on his way? With Johnny Depp helped a lot more people than he thought. <laughs> Dude, you, man, that is so wonderful. So you have this one shirt, isn't happy hour anytime, mm -hmm. and sold 1,600 orders, orders of it, which mm -hmm. equates to well more than just 1,600 shirts. Was that the only design? I did have other ones, but they weren't hitting as well as, as the well. first so one. I said, you know what, I'm not going to, when, being that they sold at the amount, at the pace that they did, I had to buy everything in bulk mm -hmm. so that it would be cost efficient to me. Yeah. Because then at that point, this was already out of my hands. There's no way I can print. Yeah, this was a business already. Yeah. Yeah. Like overnight, you know, so I had to outsource somebody to print the images, the sublimation images for me, because mm -hmm. it was a sublimation. It's, a, it's an ink that bakes that you have to bake mm -hmm. and you press it into a shirt. So it's not vinyl -y, it's not like 
stick mm. on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's not any. It's not. So you do press it, but it's ink that bakes onto the shirt. It becomes a part of the shirt. Yeah. Right. So I had to outsource somebody, which I, I found a local gentleman that helped me out in printing them at a very fast pace in the quantity that I needed. Um, I had to outsource the t-shirts from another state because nobody here locally had them before I met this other gentleman. Mm -hmm. um, now I get them through him. Um, everything had to be outsourced. The, only, the thing that I was doing though, and this is what took such, it was so time consuming, was that it wasn't just a plain t-shirt, it was a reverse tie-dye t-shirt. So yeah, what, I, saw, I saw your picture, you so had a ton of them laid out. Laid out on my grass. So what I what it is reverse tie dye is that you you're basically tie dyeing but you don't add color you're taking the color out so it's bleach. I literally bought like garden sprayers, filled it up with my bleach, half bleach, half water. I would scrunch them up, bleach them, spray them, flip it, spray it. Have to take everything to the laundromat, wash it, <laughs> and I you know come home. The process. Press the image and then ship everything out. Wow. I haven't seen these shirts. So I'm um, kind of, I was thinking black shirt, just yeah. a picture, some letters. There's a whole process to getting the, the look that you, that you want specifically. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And so every t-shirt has to be unique in the sense that the tie dye or reverse tie dye is different on yeah. all of them. You can't exactly. predict them. <laughs> And I did so, have people message me. This one doesn't look like the one you posted. I'm like, I can't predict bleaching effects. I can't even bl predict bleaching color because so many things come into play. Wow, fabric. Weather yeah. comes into play. The fabric is the same, but weather, sunlight, the hotter the day is, the brighter the sun is. Interesting. That's how it's going to more of the color, more the color that it pulls out because the UV light wow. has a lot to do with it. So it would, I, I was like on a time crunch, you know, during the day. If I had something to do in the morning or whatever, I'm like, okay, let's go. We have to go bleach. So I'd be out there bleaching and everybody helped me. What did your neighbor say? <laughs> My neighbor, so there was a, the backyard, it's pretty, it's closed off. Nobody would see it, right? But there was a, we had my son, my 17 year old's graduation party. So we had like the tent, the tables and everything set up for a few days. So I'm just like, I'm gonna have to go and bleach in the front yard. People would look at me. The neighbor's a border patrol and he's like, comes out, out of work, works graveyard and he comes in the morning. He's like, what y'all doing? I'm like, we're making t-shirts. <laughs> like, Wait a minute, what did the bleach do to your grass? So it it's not as pretty as it used to be. <laughs> I'd be living, I'd be like, it's not you better go get me a new grass. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, a, it's still alive. It's a, the, our, our gentleman that goes in and helps us cut the grass, he's like, you know, I think you have a plague going on in your grass. Like there, I, I need to fertilize it. I'm like, don't even bother right now. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. not a plague. It's just bleach. It's just bleach. It's bleach. He's <laughs> like, why are you putting Clorox? You know, and I'm just like, ah, it's a long story. <laughs> Making t-shirts. That's yeah, awesome. So. Holy shit, I'm blown away. When you told me that Rachel had started a business, a t-shirt business, I did not in a million years think that she started one in 24 hours. No, and, and that's that's why I wanted you to hear this, because a lot of people are trying to do this stuff on the Internet. Like, they've been trying to their online businesses, but you just did it. And it happens. That is... Like, there's no true. other explanation other than divine intervention, the way everything sure. played out. Yeah. Like, the day that I... The fact that I have my son that was able to help me, because mm -hmm. this would have never happened without him if he wasn't... Yeah. If I didn't have somebody that... Well, savvy, I mean, I could have done it, yeah, the new, the but I, they would have charged me two grand to set yeah. up a website, to buy domains, to this, to that, like, because keep my son charges yeah, to quite do 15, that, yeah. $18,000, $2,000, you Easily know. Easily to get it up, especially start it for somebody. that fast. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's so how long ago was this, right when the trial started? Um, I don't remember the exact, exact date, um, but it was in mid-April. Mid-April. Yes, mid-April. So you're and closing up? You're closing shop? Or you just paused um, for now? I paused it. Actually, like I said, I had paused it, mm -hmm. but then people were reaching out to me, so I reopened it. And now I'm just adding other stuff on there. So I have, like, tumblers now, some with the same design. I have, like, the little glass beer can mm -hmm. glasses that you can add, like, your iced coffee to. Um, and I do other stuff also, but right now, like, people are still reaching out to me about Johnny. I have another Johnny design that I have in mind, but I'm waiting for my son to get back because I need him to Photoshop and edit the image so that I can use it. Going, taking a technical turn to the conversation, how does that work? 
as far as copywriting and his image and things like that? So images have to be altered a certain percentage in order for oh, you to be able to, this is where you. my son comes into play. Got you, got you. Yeah, so oh, okay. I need him, I'm, and I even asked him, like, do you have your laptop with you? He's like, yes, but I'm busy right now, mom. <laughs> I'm just like, I really need you to edit this imagery, Mikey, please. So he's gonna get back later this week. Um, I have another design that I have thought of, but if not, I'm like, hey, I can think of other stuff to Anything. do, you know? Like, the thing is that, and it's like I told my husband, like, if nothing else blows up, that's fine. Because this is gonna get me through my yeah. year, you know. I I got well, my year salary. There's always subject matter. There's there, always there subject will always matter be. to to do parodies of or to mimic or to just elaborate on through a T-shirt or a saying. I I think that this is gonna be in your future indefinitely. I don't think that it's gonna ever go away. You know, there's pauses in every industry. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And there's ups and, and downs so. in them. But to start on such a massive uplift to give you the padding you need to sustain the slower months until the next trend hits gosh my god i i, I think you and your son both are doing literally what you guys are supposed to be doing there's just no other explanation well, what you have is the most important thing which is the audience mm -hmm. so you can bring them along for anything mm -hmm. i mean I've, I've heard of the uh why well, follow the 1000 true fans thing which is if you have 1000 fans only and you put out something and they're buying that all the time, you'll sustain your life forever. Yeah, for indefinitely, yeah. Yeah, I agree. So what's um what's next? Like what uh, now are you just kind of waiting to see you like, all right, what else can we, you know, do? Or do you have something that you're currently working on? Um, I have some ideas. Like I said, I'm waiting for my son to get back this Friday because I need him to edit mm -hmm. a particular picture that I, I want edited. But if not, I just I said, you know what, I'll go with it. I had somebody reach out to me yesterday saying that they need a birthday party stuff um, for a particular, I don't wanna say the name, but mm -hmm. it's a particular theme that isn't easy to find. So she wants custom cups and custom baggies and banners and things like that. So I'm just like, hey, you know, this was my, like you said, Intro, like my, yeah, introduction, yeah, my yeah. introduction and I can still upkeep by doing all these other little things, you know? And Absolutely. then I, the way I, the way I used to do it before, it's just like, I would make, pens or epoxy this or tumblers or whatever it was always for whatever holiday was going on mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. school event you know how it is in elementary schools it's like doctors they always have this something and dot day and yeah. whatever day and pink day or whatever like i'm like i can still <clears throat> you can keep, keep it up, up with yeah. that and at the end of the day i wasn't supposed to be working my husband's able to i'm blessed that he's able to sustain the family and if this is just our cushion so that i can Let continue be, going yeah. to so school and finish that up hey you know i'm i'm just i'm rolling i'm rolling with it right now and all of this is your all of this work that you conduct and do is based out of your home out of my garage that's awesome I our love garage it. <laughs> <laughs> regular bill gates over here man like, the <laughs> the internet has changed the world and we talk about this all the time it's it shrunk, shrunk it. the world because you can reach anybody at any time anywhere and i had a shirt shipped out to every single State in the United States. That's awesome. Within the month. That within the is month. I had a awesome. little map yeah. where it was like, okay, and I was just like, towards the end, it was Delaware. Like, I just need Delaware. Somebody from Delaware, <laughs> come on. Like elections, man. Come like, on. Oh. And then it hit. And I remember I called Mikey. I'm like, Mikey, I shipped to all the states <laughs> already. You know, I was so excited. I was so excited because I'm just like, amazing. this one little t shirt that I did in my enclosed yeah, garage yeah, you know yeah. i shipped it to every single state in the united states within a matter of, of a month that's rio grande valley resident yes, right here man. right that's there amazing potential i love it <laughs> effort and consistency man and collaboration because if there's one thing i hear and and often and sometimes repeat when you're talking to people is any award ceremony any business triumph that that you overcome the person receiving the award or the recognition always goes back normally and says i couldn't have done it without this or i couldn't have done it without him or her so to hear that 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 your son you know is in this industry and helped you and for you to be able to say like no i realized that i needed another individual's help to attain this kind of success is important to touch on because 
it's like I told you when we started, man. One is just too small a number to achieve greatness. Mm-hmm. You need help. Yeah. And and for those of you out there watching or listening who think, man, I got this. I can juggle all 15 of these chainsaws and nothing's going to happen. You're wrong. You need help. Like mm-hmm. no matter what, mm-hmm. whether it's a solo act or not. So um, to hear you say that and, and, and how the help is coming from somebody with less years than you, less, you know, life experiences and things like that. The help is coming from a very unexpected source in my eyes. Which is also interesting, too, because you talked about that you always wanted Mikey to go to school. School, and do yeah, stuff. you and know. So talk about that, because I think that's super interesting, because I always have that, that thing is like, I understand schools very important in certain industries and, and just to learn and be around that environment. So you talked to Mikey and said that you need to go to school, you need to do this, and you were forcing it down his throat. But he said, no, he wants to do design. Kind of touch on that. And, you know, and it wasn't about, and I told him to go to school for design. And Mm -hmm. when you say, like, it takes multiple people or, like, several people, that yes, because I'm going to be honest, this wasn't even my idea for this design. Wow. My best friend since the sixth grade was the one we... I wasn't working before I would always go to bed real early and well, you know, she's a housewife and she would send me late TikToks or jokes or memes. Uh-huh. Since I wasn't working, we had gotten into the habit of like staying up late, kind of chit-chatting on the phone and stuff. And she says, Hey, I found this picture. Do this one in a shirt. You know, she's the one that sent me the picture. And I literally, as I have her on the phone, we hung up and I did it really quick on my laptop and I send her a picture from my screen. Like this, she's like, yes, do it like that, perfect. <laughs> the next day is when I did my bleaching, my tie dye and everything, and then I created it. And then that's, you know, oh yeah, that's, I want one too, I want one too. So when I was posted that TikTok, it had, I had like maybe five or six laid out mm-hmm. shirts, and then that's the one that went viral. So when you say like, it takes multiple people, like she was like, oh, yeah. I tell her she's my creative designer. <laughs> I called her the next day and I'm bawling. Wow. I'm bawling, right, wow. the next morning. And she's like, what, what happened? What's wrong? And I'm like, my shirt went viral. And she's like, why are you crying? We're still I was, trying to go viral. I was just happens. so overwhelmed because I just, I still couldn't, it took me a good maybe two weeks to understand what was what happening. Comes with it, yeah. What wow. comes you know? With that kind of and then with Mikey, Mikey's words, I'll never forget his words to me, my kid. He's like, I told you the internet can change a person's life. Yeah. So with Mikey, when he went to school, he started college his freshman year. And since his, I think sophomore year in high school, he would go and put his brand, he created his brand, right, psych word, and he would go and get shirts screen printed and he would sell them to his buddies at school. Sweatshirts, t-shirts, 20, 25 bucks, and that's how he would make extra money. Hustle. You know? Um, In his senior yearbook, they wrote an article about him. Wow. And he's there saying, and people would make fun of him. Mm -hmm. He's there saying, I'm going to be, this is my... I'm a, I'm a designer. I'm, mm-hmm. you know, going full force with it. I'm going to sell my stuff. You know, I'm going to sell it. And he got teased about it. And to this day, he still says, I want to buy a billboard and put it right in front of the school. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's his goal, you yeah. know, <laughs> for those teachers and people that told yeah, him amazing, otherwise. Yeah, amazing, yeah. And, and it's like I tell him, Mikey, it's because when he quit going to school, I was extremely upset with him. And I told him, look, I'm not going to have an adult kid living in my house for free. You're going to pay rent. Mm-hmm. You can pay rent, your insurance, your cell phone. You want an adult? This is adult. I'm not going to hand any. Nothing was ever handed to me. I'm not going to mm-hmm. enable my child to just be at home doing nothing yeah. or ha- his hobby. I, I would say that it was it, it's like a hobby, you know, because I couldn't fully understand how a person could make a living selling stuff on the Internet. Because you're not out. Yeah, you're not out physically going sweating, person to person, busting yeah. your butt. You know, it's that's not the traditional work that our, we all grew up with. Our era, yeah. you know, unless you're out there hustling and yes. making ends meet, it's not going to come. It's to not going to happen. So I was, I'm not from that generation of the internet world. Mm-hmm. I mean, I use it and stuff, but not at that capacity. Yeah. And when he started blowing up, he told me, you know, mom, the internet can change a person's life, and. Then it comes back to me, full circle. Wow. You know, it's just like, and he's like, I told you, mom. I told you. I'm like, I know, baby. And it's not that, it, it's like I told him. It's not that I never believed in him. Because I knew since he, I, Mikey has always. Designed something. Designed. He's always been, uh, you know, drawing, 
um, he has ADHD and he struggled with it a lot growing up. And that was his way outlet. of his outlet. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. His, his drawing, you wow. know, and it got him to where he's at now. You know, he's made a living. He's 21 now. He's made a living for two and a half years. Well, and then I think w the way you described earlier, like um, <clears throat> that it's a little darker, a little gothic year and psych war, the name. I think that nowadays a lot of parents would have um, campaigned against that theme, you know, campaigned yeah. against um, the mood or, or the insinuation of the shirt or the apparel. I know my dad would have been like, you ain't going to wear that shit. What's, what's wrong with you? What, what mess, you know? And for him to find the niche and cater to it and not let it um, influence the business side of the niche or the theme is super admirable because I see kids out there who are super gothy and super, you know, wearing some stuff that, that it doesn't appeal to my taste, but mm -hmm. I understand how they, they, they feel themselves in it. And never in my mind do I see that and think somebody is making a living off of that shirt. Somebody is designing that shirt. All you see is the individual wearing it. Yeah. Um, so not to hear you say that, I think that it speaks volumes to the fact that you, although you were against him leaving school, I feel like you had to have nurtured his aspirations. I did, because yeah. I'm a true crime junkie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what I was about to talk about. It's like, you go on to Netflix, and there's just shows, true crime stories, and all that stuff. It's a very niche market. Mm -hmm. From, And I say, you know, I'm the reason why you're where you're at, because, <laughs> because this is, this is my way of kind of Justifying telling him, it, yeah, yes, you know, because during my pregnancy with him, I was so sick, so sick, throwing up nonstop, 24 seven. I lost 30 pounds during my pregnancy, not gained a single pound. Wow. So I wasn't able to work and I would read a lot. And back in the day, you know, it wasn't internet reading or anything. Uh, I used to go to the a store at the mall called Walden Books. I don't know if y'all remember, remember that store. Oh, shit, yeah. If they didn't have a particular book that I want, and it was always like reading Jeffrey Dahmer books and serial crime, serial killers mm -hmm. and true crime and I'll never, Girl in the Box. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a book called the Girl in the Box book that where a girl was kept in a coffin-sized box underneath the bed. She was kidnapped. Jeez. And I used to read all this stuff. And my best friend, the one that my creative designer, <laughs> Her aunt would tell me, stop reading that crap while you're pregnant. Your child can sense everything while you were carrying your child, you know? So since, and then I was a single mom for so long and I would watch 2020 and Dateline and it kind of planted that seed in yeah. him to, he used to love watching it with me, That is you know? And then he amazing. blows it up and starts creating stuff that has to do with serial killers and true crime stuff. And it's, That's amazing gotten him where he's at yeah you know? no I, that that in itself is a testament to what being positive and nurturing a child or any individual can lead to because if you support them while they're in their gothic stage or while they're experimenting with what brings them a good feeling whatever it may be if you're positive and you nurture them and you you give them that support, it it could blossom into fruitful ventures, you know, and 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 a clean mindset, regardless of what the items he's selling reflect or make me feel like. The truth of the matter is, is that every gothic or every serial killer or psych ward shirt that he produces that may have ties to a negative event for whatever reason, it's bringing him positivity in his life. And the people who are wearing it are feeling accomplished by buying it for themselves, you know, or giving it to a friend. And so I think that it's it speaks volumes, like I said earlier, that that in when you nurture things that you don't understand, sometimes it leads to really, really good stuff like this. Now, here you are doing basically what you were asking your son not to do. Yep. You know, so <laughs> that's what I mean. Talk about full <laughs> circle. Talk about realization and, 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 and the whole positivity vibe. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm super enamored with the story of your son and, and how he basically looked at his peers at school and says, 
you know, part of my French, but fuck you, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, you know, because it I'm makes do. me happy. What I'm doing isn't a reflection of you. It's a reflection of what makes me feel good and accomplished. Mm -hmm. And it's important that people get back to understanding that what makes us happy is important because if you're happy, your happiness will rub, rub off against even your naysayers, you know? Yeah. So God bless you guys, man. That's so, so awesome. The money part is badass because everybody wakes up in the morning needing and wanting more money for whatever reasons, good or bad. But the process that you guys went through and how it brought you all together and how you've created something that other people in the world are appreciating and wearing proudly. Yeah. Dude, that's Talk about just hitting that mark, man. The, the interesting part is there's so many people in the world. So obviously some of those niches are going to be fulfilled. And I talk about this all the time is finding an under an so, underserved yeah, an under service market, under service market and, and service and I servicing. Mean, it. I think that's amazing. Wow, so what's next? What are you working on now? Um, I mean, like I said, I'm just kind of rolling with that. We, I, the way I'm thinking right now is October is coming around. It's breast cancer awareness. So maybe mm -hmm. toss out a design for that. And mm -hmm. then Halloween. Halloween's like my absolute favorite holiday yes. of all time. Um, throw out some designs for that. And then we have like Thanksgiving, football, you know, just. So it basically went from just a shirt that you wanted to kind of sport yourself to mm -hmm. now you have this whole business that you need to cater to and kind of work with and whatnot. And you don't have a specific theme. No. It's whatever you want on any kind of piece of merchandise. I'll get it and make it for you and get it to you. Yeah. And that's kind of what I'm doing for my friend that reached out to me for that birthday party that she's having wow. Monday. Um, and the best part of this is like, I tell people, you know, I went from working 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, being on call every other weekend to working like 24 hours <laughs> for the past, you know, two months. Entrepreneurship is fun, but, isn't it? But <laughs> I would not trade it for the for world, the world yeah, because, no. freedom. you know, freedom, you know, and, I, and, not, and it's not to say that I, I loved my job. I loved what I did. Um, but I don't have to be there to be an advocate, you know, yeah, I can no, be an advocate anywhere. That's exactly right. And you know, I would pray about it and I would ask God, just give me a sign. Maybe it was my time, maybe not, because I was kind of teeter-tottering back and mm -hmm. forth. And I got my sign. Wow. Yeah. You know, and, and like you said, the money part is good. And yes, and on paper, it looks like, wow, she made all this money. If she's selling them for this much. But what people don't seem to keep in mind a lot of times, like the outsiders Overhead. that don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Fees half too? of it's gone. Jeez. You know, half of it's gone because you have to pay your you have to website. reimburse yourself for your you initial investment. You have to pay for all the product. You have to pay for people that I'm paying to help me and print And every stuff. single order has a fee that gets attached to it. That exactly. And that's what people don't understand. But like I said, if it just happened once, so be it. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it. It's going to get me through this, this next year of me being able to stay. I'm able to take my kids to swim lessons. Awesome. You know, that's why I had to reschedule with you. Yeah. I'm like, my kids are swimming from this time to this time. And I was never able to do that before. But the thing know? is that what what the value, at least in my humble opinion, is the intrigue that you've captured over all of these people. Now, there are people out there, at least 1,600 of them, who have ordered from you, who have sampled your product, sampled your efficiency, your worth ethics. You got them the product. Now you have 1,600 people who are just... When is Rachel gonna drop something else? You don't know how many you know? messages I've gotten. Oh, I bet. Like, <laughs> of like, what are you coming up building. with next? Oh, great quality. I love the shirt. It's so soft. You know, let me know what else you come up. With. I have. That's a lady where the value is. Literally, order a second shirt yesterday because she says the first Maybe one. Goosebumps. That's where the value is, man. The first one, I didn't want to wear it because I don't want to mess it up. Wow. She's like, so I ordered a second one, and then I, it's a, that same day she ordered the second one was when I added the tumblers and the. The, those glass cups for like the iced coffees mm -hmm. um mind you that i just left a decal on that iced coffee cup like it's not yeah it's not you rocket know, science you're no, not inventing no 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 anything. and it's a, that decal is something i purchased off of etsy yeah. you know so i i did that the same day she ordered the second t-shirt because she wants to wear the first one and not mess one of them up mm -hmm. she ordered two a tumbler and the glass cup also nice. And she says, anything else, just let me know. Let me know what you have. Yeah, and I'm just that like, is where the awesome. true value is, man, yeah. that the eyes are on you now. And they are looking for the quality that they already associate with you. Mm -hmm. And if you can instill that in people who are following you, then you're always going to have a sale, whether it's 
something that you're creating yourself or something that's niche or something the fact of the matter is that you've gained 1800 people who trust your product mm -hmm. and your brand and shit man that's worth that's, that's amazing. worth its weight in gold you so know, rachel just, before we finish off the people that are on the sidelines worried about just getting started what would you tell them like if they're in the same spot as you were what would you tell them what piece of advice if it could happen accidentally to me then it can happen to anybody you just have to get it out there to the right audience mm -hmm. simple as that go and with TikTok it TikTok was your audience that was TikTok the vessel was that, that you delivered everything to wow yeah. did you ever think that you'd be using TikTok to make sales Honestly, I was completely against TikTok, <laughs> but the pandemic happened. Yeah, and when we were yeah. at home, honestly, like that's what got me through watching the funny videos, what people would post. And think, that's what got me through. I want you to know, I still to this day don't own or have a TikTok. Or my a, husband ever. didn't have one until I went viral. And now he got his own. <laughs> so he could be my follower. <laughs> <laughs> well... I'm in love with the story. I like how everything um, came together for you guys and for your son, especially, and you. Um, I'm kind of considering getting a TikTok now, man. Do it and follow me. I've been <laughs> telling this guy forever to get TikToks, and there's I'll, there's times that I'll put you on TikTok, and he's like, oh, all right, so whatever. He's, yeah, I was like, all right, go ahead, record. <laughs> it's just that I, I'm so it's so foreign to me, you know, and I have yet to experience the value firsthand. I see the value you pulled out of it. I see the value you get out of and it. And you did it without any dancing or any, well, technically it is a trend, but without any dancing, I think that a lot of people think that you have to go on TikTok and dance. And dance or make a fool of yourself yeah. or do something stupid to gain which, the, the which followers. Which I do. I, 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 like, I would love for you to see the TikTok that I, the first time that I posted. I'll, I'll show it to you before I leave yes. just so you can see what I actually put out there. Because like I said, I never well, it's funny I, even I, advertised mm -hmm. that t-shirt. It was never even advertised. It was more like nothing was on there. It was just like another Johnny Depp design. I think it had the, my caption. Mm -hmm. Like that was it another Johnny Depp shirt I think this is my favorite or something to that effect and that's it and it's crazy because you didn't have any like high-end production you literally used a phone my phone that's that what I crazy. used well it, it's something similar happened to Judy my wife and I back when the, when we when the pandemic first hit uh, my wife and I brought down and owned the very first fully sanctioned and legal poker room here in the valley in Edinburgh uh -huh. it's called the house club when the pandemic hit, um, we everybody obviously had to close down, and all of a sudden you started seeing these plexiglasses up at the grocery stores and banks and you know everywhere. I called a good buddy of mine who was also a member of our club, uh, Roy, who works with plexiglasses and, and and acrylics and stuff like that, and I told him, Roy, I'd like to build a barrier that would separate each one of my players from the dealer and and he was like I got you and he came over and we sat we brainstormed and before you know it we set up a poker table with individual slots plexiglass everything and it just it was functional and I recorded us assembling it my wife's in the background and stuff and I just posted it hey members we're about to you know we're getting these things up for everybody's protection at 4.30 in the morning, I start getting text messages, bling, 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 bling. And my wife's like, who's texting us? And we get in, sure enough, it was all these members who saw it, who were telling me, Rob, your video just went viral. And you got these professional people who play poker, sharing and talking about it and commenting. Wow. And all of them were telling, them, telling me that I was an idiot, basically. But I didn't care. Everybody was looking at what we were doing. Mm -hmm. So I understand the process of going viral and how it can be monetized but i didn't have anything to offer them yeah. it's like i'm doing this for me mm -hmm. you guys want to do it you can copy it and do it yourselves but i didn't have an empire money to start traveling and you know retrofitting tables with plexiglass here you very innocently post a picture of a t-shirt that you designed and made and it turns into cash yeah. my last check was used to purchase boxes of t-shirts Wow. 
man. That is That's just what I, so and I just, all I did was like, me persine, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, here, go, go my go last. Do your thing. Yeah. And it was, a, oh, sorry, my last, like, it was a partial check. So it wasn't even like an 80 hour check. It was not what I was used to. It was mm-hmm. a small check, but I said, here we go. Deposit. Sabe lo que hace. And I purchased cases of t shirts. That's awesome. That's. Well, Rachel, man, I'm just so blown away by the story. I told you. And, uh, yeah, he was telling me, I was like, what, she sells t-shirts? And he was like, yeah, but like, dude, like overnight and this. And I was like, all right, bring her on. Let's talk to her. I want to know. It was crazy. I am telling you, it took me a good two weeks to fully, I guess, like. Ground yourself and absorb everything. Because I, I would get online and I would see the number of sales and I'd start crying. Because I'm just like, and not out of everybody's because you were scared. No, because I couldn't well. believe that yeah. that was happening to me. Yeah, you it's, know, like it's humbling. Well, I will say this before we finish off the podcast. Uh, everybody that is an advocate, you all are really the true heroes. I, I got to see from the sidelines mm-hmm. of what you all do every single day. And it's super admirable. And I, I thank you for that because I never got to thank you all in person. So now that you're here, thank you for everything that you do. I, I think these are the unsung heroes that the Rio Grande Definitely. Valley, especially here in the Rio Grande Valley, because child, child abuse is, is very prevalent here and, and a lot of stuff like that. It's horrible stuff that you never get to hear about. People like you take it in you and internalize it. So before, I've always wanted to say it. Thank you. Thank for, you for yes. what you all do and and for being an inspiration to all the entrepreneurs and all the people out there who are struggling to make ends meet and who um get disillusioned by shortcomings that we all uh, suffer from sometimes i think that you are a very positive person to look at in terms of good things happen they happen quickly and you have to remain positive and grateful and if you do then you'll see yourself through that. And, and you're a testament to that, Rachel. So thank you for coming on and sharing. And you need to help us get your son here so we can oh, interview absolutely. him. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure he'd love it. That'd awesome. be great, man. I'm so, I'm so impressed by today's youth and, yeah. and everybody who's benefiting from the, from the internet. Well, Rachel. The true heroes, though, I have to say before yes, we finish yes. up, I've always said that the true heroes are all those survivors that walk through those doors of like places like the courthouse and advocacy centers and... Casa, Mm -hmm. you know, those are the true heroes because, you know, those children are so resilient. And I feel like adults are the ones that have a harder time understanding or fully getting through what we we would listen to on a daily basis. Those children are, you know, they were amazing. And honestly, they were what kept us going. Wow. You know, so those are the true heroes, I I feel. I, I definitely agree. Well, Rachel, thank you very much for sharing our story. I feel like we needed more time, but this this is super fun. Yes, thank you so much. You're going to inspire a lot of people. I guarantee you. Because I'm going to send this link to all those people that were like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the perfect time. There is no perfect time. Yeah, you got to do it. You got to do it. Let it fall on your lap. Yeah. And be grateful when it does. You know, me not even like wanting to get to that level, it just happened. So that's so. If it's meant for it to happen, it's going to happen. Just keep going with it. I wish you continued success. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Rachel. Bye. Bye. See y'all later.